Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Actually, the first tutorial of 2019. And I've asked you what you would like to see next or as a first tutorial this year. And you've chosen web applications with Vapor and Swift. This was a poll in the community tab of my channel. And if you also want to take part in polls like these, then make sure to subscribe to my channel for free and you have access to this community tab and all of the polls that I am going to add there. So if you want to take part in one of the next polls, then make sure to subscribe. And now we're going to have a look at Vapor and web applications with Swift. Vapor is an amazing framework. It is completely built with Swift and it is based on the Swift Neo framework that comes from Apple. And this is a really, really fast networking framework. And Vapor states that this is the future of web development and it definitely could be. And in this video, we're going to have a look at three things. First of all, we're going to have a look at what Vapor can do. We're going to see how to install Vapor on a Mac. And then we're also going to create a tiny web application in this video. And if you'd like to see more, then just let me know in the comments below. So first of all, what can Vapor do for you? Well, you can use Swift and Xcode to create RESTful APIs, for example, so that you can build your own service having full control about how you handle data, how you transfer data from a iOS app, for example, to a server or a database using your very own API. And of course, also accessing that from the web and creating full web applications with Swift and Xcode. So this is very cool. And you can even create real time applications like instant messaging with Vapor, Swift and Xcode. So just to illustrate that, what you can do is, of course, having an iOS application that creates content or data, and you can send and retrieve that data using a web service to a database on the web. And this could be, for example, a catalog of cat images, a weather service, a chat messaging service, whatever you can actually imagine. And the cool thing is that you can use the same API that you've written in Swift to access both or to use it for both ends for a web application and for a mobile application. And this just works like any other web API that you might already have used like dark sky or whatever you can think of. And the great thing really is that you do not have to rely on these technologies that you might already know, but that are a little bit more cumbersome actually than using Swift and Xcode if you're used to it. So you don't have to learn Python, you don't have to learn PHP, you don't have to work with Rails or Node.js. It is just pure Swift. So this is really amazing, especially if you're an iOS developer and haven't really tried out web development so far, but are really edging to actually create something that also runs on the web and using a web browser. So it is even possible to use a powerful templating language that they are calling Leave that has a Swift inspired syntax. And with that, you can create dynamic HTML pages and create your front end all by yourself. You can style it with some CSS, whatever you like. So this is just a quick overview about what Vapor can do. And we are going to create our very own web application right now. But before we can get started, we need to perform a little setup process and the all the steps that you need to take depend on what you've already installed on your machine, but you're definitely going to need your terminal right now. So just make sure to open that up. And first of all, we're going to deal with the Xcode command line tools and to install them, you will simply have to enter the Xcode select and the install command and just enter that into your terminal, hit return. And if you get the message like I do right here that the command line tools are already installed, you're ready to move on. If not, a little pop-up may have just appeared and this is going to guide you through the installation process of the command line tools. So just perform this installation, return back 
to the video afterwards. And if you're ready, then we can now install the next piece of software that we need to actually install Vapor on our machine. And this is Homebrew. You might already have that on your Mac, but if not, just open up brew.sh to get the instructions on how to install Homebrew. And Homebrew is actually going to be responsible for installing Vapor and also other cool stuff that you can add to your Mac. So if you have Homebrew already installed, we can move forward. If not, just complete the installation and then return back to the video. So in order to install Vapor now, all we actually need to do is enter brew, install Vapor slash tab slash Vapor. And this is going to download and install everything you're going to need. If you already have the newest version of Homebrew, then an update won't be necessary. And this is going to go very fast. If not, then this might take some time also to install Vapor depending on your connection speed. And in my case, I've already installed Vapor and could just reinstall everything if I wanted to. So if the installation is complete, you can just return back to the tutorial. And what we are going to do now is actually creating some space for our first web application. And therefore I'm going to create a new directory um, using my make directory command in the terminal. And I'm going to call it maybe vapor tutorial, just hit return and then using change directory and just enter this directory. So we're now, uh, we've opened our vapor tutorial directory and now we can really create our first application. And therefore we're going to use vapor and just hit new and let's maybe call this a first web app, first web app. So vapor new first web app, this is of course our project name. Hit return and now we're cloning the template from the internet and we get the message that we have successfully created our first project if you're seeing something like this. So our project first web app has been created and it now suggests that we should actually change to this directory. So let's just do that, change directory to first web app. And what we can do here is just call vapor build. This build process might have taken some time depending on your internet speed because you had to fetch all dependencies and then our project now finally is built and we can run vapor run. And now vapor tells us that it is starting a server on localhost and the port 8080. And we can just copy and paste that to a Safari window. And if I run this, then you can see that we get the message it works and this means that we are now ready to use our project. And to see where this is coming from, let's open up our Vapor tutorial folder in our home directory. There you will find the first web app folder that we have created and a lot of files that are associated with our new project, but you won't see an Xcode file yet. We have uh, a few Swift files already, but no Xcode project that we can work with. Therefore, and to generate such an Xcode project, let's go back to our terminal and make sure that we are closing the server down, pressing Control C on the keyboard to stop our server. And then we can use Vapor again, use the Xcode command, and just use dash Y, hit return. And this is going to generate now an Xcode project for us and is also automatically opening up Xcode to display what was created. Now this project might look a little intimidating first, but let's just close down all of these groups right here and just focus on what we're interested really, which is the app group in the sources group. And here we're interested in the routes.swift file. And we're now going to analyze just a little bit of what is happening here. And we're just removing this example of configuring a controller since this isn't too important for us right now. So if you remember, when we first started our server using the terminal, we got the message, it works. And this is where this is coming from. To show this again, let's run our server again 
and be sure to just switch the scheme first. So next to the uh, run and stop button in the top left corner, make sure to select run right now. And then instead of choosing an iOS device or a simulator or whatever, just make sure to select my Mac. And then we can just hit the run button or press command R on the keyboard. And this now runs our project and a server again on localhost and the port 8080. This build process can again take some time depending on the capabilities of your machine, but as soon as you get these messages in the console, you're ready to continue. I'm just opening up another browser here, uh, like Firefox, and here, now that I've started my server, I can just hit return for localhost 8080, and we get the it works message. And now what we have here is it works, and it works is definitely the same string as we have here and this is coming from just the standard route. So the first endpoint, if you'd like to call it that way, um, of our API gives us just this string because we're performing a GET request. And if you're familiar a little bit with HTTP, then you know that we can, for example, um, create GET requests to retrieve information. And we can also um, create POST requests to actually send information to an API. And we are now focusing, first of all, on the GET requests. And what we can do with a router is also very simple. A router is responsible for registering the routes that are then giving us the appropriate responses to what we want. And now if we have a look at the basic hello world example, we can just maybe change that a little bit to hello YouTube. Um, then you will see that we are just adding a new route to our service. When we add or when we perform a get request with this route, hello, then a string, namely hello YouTube, is returned to us. And we can just try it out again in our browser, adding a slash new path component to our URL, adding hello, hitting return, and we still get hello world. And this is because every time we make changes to our API or to our um, route Swift file, we have to compile our um, our service again. So it is now compiled and ready and we can open up Firefox again, reload our page and we get hello YouTube. Isn't that cool? And now we are going to create another route that is a little bit more advanced. It is going to get a parameter so that we can greet someone. So all we are going to do is use our router. We want to perform a get request or we want to actually handle a get request and we're listening for a specific path, which is hello. And then we do not want to state another string. Instead, we want a, let's say, a custom path component using string parameter. And the documentation states that this creates a path component for this type, which can be used when registering routes to a router. So we're now using a path component a of type string to deal with in our closure that is going to follow. So here's one parameter, which is a request. We have to return a string in this closure. And all we need to do now is create a name constant. And then we take our request with a try statement because there could go something wrong here using the request, using the parameters of this request and using the next string that we get from there. And with that, we have a string that we can work with. And now all that's left for us is returning a new string like hello and the person we want to greet using string interpolation here. So we say hello and then the name of someone. And maybe we also do not want to use hello here as our first path component or as first part of our route, let's maybe say we use the string greet. And then if I'm going to run this again um, on my machine, our server has started opening up our browser and then I'm going to add greet YouTube and we get hello YouTube. 
maybe also greet myself here, greet Brian, and we get hello, Brian. And this really is our first web application written in just a few minutes, just using your favorite language, Swift, and your favorite IDE, Xcode, and I think this is pretty cool stuff. So these are just the basics of Vapor and Swift, of course, um, and I don't want to make this video too long. Just let me know, please, if you'd like to see more about Vapor and a more advanced API that we're building with Vapor, let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel to not miss any future tutorials, and if you want to take part in polls in the future, then also subscribe because that then you can see them in the Communities tab. I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.